What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It's time now for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, October 13th, 2023. That's right. It's Friday the 13th, and Friday the 13th is coming with some mischief in the form of new COVID outbreaks. First off, in Alberta, Canada, there is a COVID outbreaks on three Red Deer Hospital units. It says a total of 23 patients and 18 healthcare workers have tested positive. Two outbreaks were declared on September 28th and one on October 7th. So there are some outbreaks ongoing in this healthcare facility up in Alberta, Canada. Now moving over to, I believe this is in Ireland. It says visiting restricted at Cork Hospital due to a COVID outbreak. Now we move back to North America, switching gears a little bit. We haven't talked about H5N1 in a while, which is bird flu, but we have to. Bird flu shows up in Washington seals, alarming scientists. So here's the deal with this. It says here, bird flu shows up in Washington seals, alarming scientists. An outbreak of bird flu has spread to harbor seals off the coast of Washington. In the first documented instant, of marine mammals dying from the disease on the west coast so this is not good we've been seeing it spread to various different animals around the world we've seen it spread to very diff various different animals in the united states and now it is impacting seals so we'll have to keep an eye on this it says here some mammals may act as mixing vessels for flu viruses leading to the emergence of new strains that could prove more harmful to humans who the world health organization said so this is something we'll have to watch if you recall in montana three grizzly bears have also tested positive for avian flu i don't know if this is a new round of uh, grizzly bears but we have like i said we have seen various different animals in the past uh, test positive for h5n1 it's something that we've been following for a long time and from time to time it shows its face and becomes an issue again and right now we're going through a wave of that again because uh, we've had a couple things in the h5n1 category pop up when i searched that in on news lately all right let's take a look at air quality air quality is not terrible in the united states with exceptions to a few areas you're seeing here on the west coast there are still some wildfire concerns then you're seeing a couple uh, maroon sites i don't know what that's all about maybe they're fires maybe they're not um, Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, Great Lakes, not doing too bad, but we do have some poor air quality around Chicago, and there is a storm system that's moving through there. And once the storm system clears the East Coast, that should bring better air quality. Let's take a look at heat-related illnesses, and I have to refresh, it, refresh this to make sure it's up to date. And heat-related illnesses are not really a big deal now. There's still some counties that are seeing um higher than average heat related illnesses but the worst state right now you guessed it florida florida is still really bad texas still has some counties but if you look up north you can see here it's starting to lower from north to south and we expect that trend to continue taking a look now at walgreens and we can see the national positivity this week is 26.4 percent the prior week was 27.4 percent there was a down one percent total test 10,955 the prior week was 9,264 let's take a look at a few states we didn't do all the states last time we did a update here from my computer but uh, let's take a look at a few states we may do some that we did and some that we didn't do we'll do a couple from each region and then we do have a lot of data to get through today pennsylvania 27.5 percent current week prior week was 30.2 percent difference of down 2.7 percent total test 120 versus 106 so that is up for testing in pennsylvania but it's good to see the positivity down West Virginia, the positivity this week is 17.9%, prior week was 45%. Total test, 28 versus 20, that is down significantly. Then we come down here to Georgia. Georgia, 24.5% positivity this week, prior week was 20.3%. That's up 4.3% and big increase in testing, so this is not good. 416 tests versus 
306. It's good to see testing up. It's not good to see the positivity up there. Alabama, 26.1% this week. Prior week was 28.1%. There was a down 2%. 92 tests versus 89. So that is an increase in testing. Let's come out here to Colorado. 34.6% positivity this week. Prior week was 30.5%. Difference of up 4% with testing being up too. 246 tests versus 239. Let's take a look now at Wisconsin, shall we? Wisconsin, 29.2% positivity this week. Prior week, 26.4%. That's a difference of up 2.8%. Total test, 346 versus 284. One more state, Missouri. 29.6% uh, positivity this week. 22.8% last week. That's up 6.9%. Testing's down slightly, but you know what? This is a legitimate rise because testing's not down by much. 199 versus 202. All right, let's take a look at BioBot for this week. And full disclaimer, BioBot is not as reliable as it once was because they lost their contract with the CDC. I think that's going to change to someone else. I'm not 100% certain or understand the story that's going on here, but what I can tell you here is that... Uh, this is not updated in a while. September 27th, yeah. So this is outdated data. What we do want to look at now is let's uh, update the CDC page, shall we? And let's see what the update shows for a uh, total number of various different sites. So new sites, 120. 0 to 19% COVID detected. That's really low levels. That's at uh, 50 sites. 20 to 39% COVID detected. That's getting a little bit higher. That's at 245. Then you have 40 to 59 percent COVID detected. That's at 360. So that's getting into the moderate level. Then you get 60 to 79 percent COVID detected. 292 sites. That's getting even higher. And then when you're really high, like almost off the charts, 80 to 100 percent. There's 107 sites like that are way up here. So yeah, that's not good. But the number of orange and red sites continues to drop the number of blue sites lighter blue and then moderate shade of blue is increasing which means the levels on the national standpoint they are slowly starting to come down now but we're still seeing a lot of red and orange look up in the northeast the south is not doing as bad but full disclaimer louisiana uh, arkansas a lot of these states here still have a ton of gray sites it's good to see the sites back in ohio so that's some good news uh, I think we're going to do a full wastewater update video on Sunday this week. We're going to do our old-fashioned, you know, go through the sites. I was going to go through some sites now, but we'll actually instead go through a couple of these wastewater scan sites. And I say keyword, just a couple, because we want to see what's, uh, you know, get an idea of what's going on right now. Let's take a look at Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We have not done that site in a while. Remember the last go-around when we did Harrisburg, Pennsylvania? What did we find? Got to move myself to the right. We found an MPOX case. And taking a look here, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, COVID starting to go up again. And you can see here, there's that MPOX case that was detected back on September 21st of 2023. Norovirus is low, but I should give you a disclaimer here. On the national standpoint, this is nationally now, and I want to show you this on the map. You can see here, look what's listed for norovirus now. It's now listed as high. That's not good. Norovirus can really impact senior facilities. It can become deadly, too. So uh, that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on, norovirus going up. But again, we're going to do a full wastewater update video on Sunday this week. We haven't really done such of a type thing in a while because uh, the days have changed when this updates and everything, and I think it warrants us to do one this week. All right, Here's some new data that just came in today. This is uh, COVID variant data, which just came in today. Believe it or not, EG.5 has now dropped. You heard me correctly. EG.5 has now dropped to 23.6%. The reason why it has dropped is because HV.1 has risen to 19.5%. Additionally, FL151 is now 13.5%. Then you have XVB116.6 at 10.3%. Then there is an HK.3, which is at 4.9%. And there's a whole bunch of other variants. I mean, there's a ton that are below 1%. And you have a couple others which are starting to 
uh, pop up GK.2, HF.1, which is at 1.7%. So there's a lot of reasons why EG.5 has dropped. And the big reason is because we're in variant soup. But again, this HV.1, it's rapidly starting to gain ground. You can see it here. Look at it here. This It's this uh, color right here. You can see week over week or well, every other week they update, and you can see here, it's really starting to increase now. So that's why you are seeing the drop in EG.5. Speaking of a drop, this is a good drop. COVID hospital admissions for the past week have dropped 16,766. 16, Remember, it was over 18,000 on the last update. And you can see almost all uh, states are now either stable or or dropping so this is really good news now let's take a look at some data from Chicago and this is also good hospitalizations down hospital beds in use down emergency department room visits down laboratory confirmed cases down bad news deaths are up why are deaths up like I always say deaths are the last lagging piece of a wave but here's something else that is up. And this is actually a good thing. It says average daily vaccinations administered. It's now over 3,500 in Chicago. That's a good thing. That's good to see it up. That means people are getting their booster. Take a look at the chart here. Can we actually zoom in this chart? I don't know if we can or not. Yes, we can. And you'll see here on the zoomed in version of this uh, chart that uh, the number of people taking their COVID boosters or vaccination in general, it is going up. Look at this. That, that is something we'd like to see go up. Now let's shift over a little bit further to the east to New Jersey. Hospitalizations, 588. People on a ventilator, 28. In the ICU, 68. Ah, 68, that's still, it's not a good number, but it usually follows about 10% of the hospitalizations and discharges. 112 discharges. That's a good thing. So I think the hospitalizations, it's safe to say from this wave, the summer wave, they're continuing to come down. We'll see how long this lasts. My suspicion is places like New Jersey and all the places I'm going to be showing you, probably come November, post Halloween is when we start to see the winter wave set in. And we're going to see a multi-week, maybe multi-month period of rise. Then some point in January, we see a peak for the winter wave. Let's cross the river over to Pennsylvania, southeast Pennsylvania, Philadelphia County, my city. 789 EMS incidents for Thursday. Let's do a live look at what's going on in Montgomery County, which is a suburb of Philadelphia County. Just 12 incidents right now. I'm seeing respiratory emergency. EMS special service. That could be a uh, high school football game. Looking at that address, I know the address. It is a high school football game. And, uh, yep, there's some other stuff going on. Chester County, I'm seeing a few respiratory difficulty calls. I'm also seeing EMSST, once again, probably high school football games. And let's go over to New York. New York had 2,152 new cases reported. And I can give you some really good news about New York. Not only are hospitalizations dropping there, they're starting to drop at a fairly decent uh, pace here. I mean, just last week, on the 6th, there were 1,645 people in the hospital, and this is in uh, statewide, and you can see today it's coming up as 1,463 people in the hospital. And interesting to note, let's refresh this again. I just noticed something. I'm not liking what I'm noticing here. Let's zoom this in. I think you know what I'm talking about. I usually give another number when I talk about hospitalizations. That would be the ICU count. So New York State decided... Let's take away the number of people in the ICU. I don't know why. So they're not going to keep count of the number of people in the ICU anymore. That's bad. Hopefully uh, they don't take away the number of people in the hospital. We have seen so many states. Ohio being one of them. And I think it's going to be California too. I don't know. There's quite a few of them. That uh, they don't tell you how many people are actively in the hospital. They tell you how many people total since the pandemic started are in the hospital. What's going on with emissions in New York? Did they change that data as well? Uh, not really. No, emissions data did not change, but we are seeing here emissions. They're starting to drop as well. Where do we want to head to next? 
Let's head up further north of I-95 and see what's going on up in Massachusetts. And Massachusetts says that 10.4% uh, of emergency department visits during the last week were for acute respiratory disease. Currently, COVID influenza is low at this time, but again, that goes by the CDC metrics, which sometimes can be flawed. Now let's head out to the West Coast and see what's going on in Washington State where they use things on a percent. A lot of people don't like percents. I'm not too fond of percents as well, but we'll go with it. Uh, emergency department visits for COVID, down. Emergency department visits for influenza is either under 1% or 0%. It's saying 0%. Then we take a look here at percentage of hospital admissions, down by 24% for COVID, down 50% for influenza, and currently in the ICU for COVID, 38 people. This is again in the state of Washington. Now let's take a look at Colorado where there's 192 people in the hospital. We would look at some of this other data, but every time I try and load it, it comes up with issues with the cases. It it, it overtakes the screen. So we're going to have to skip that portion for now. And just as well, we do have other states to look at. Texas, thank you for not changing your page and leaving it the same way. I'm I'm, it's it's getting annoying how many different states just keep changing things. Leave it alone. Leave the data the way it was. I think they're purposely trying. Some of these states are purposely trying to make it as hard as possible to find the data to either cover something up. I don't know. It's just a speculation. Uh, like New York State with the ICUs. Why would you not show the number of people in the ICU now? I don't know. Uh, Texas, current week's cases, 9,891. That's actually a significant drop. That's down by 3,745 from last week's 13,636. But we also have this. Fatalities down as well. They're down by 9. That's a good thing. 62 versus 71. Hospitalizations, uh, they're dropping. If they continue to drop at this rate, they'll go back below 1,000 next week. 1,070 this week versus 1,214 last week. Now let's go out to California where the positivity rate has also dropped. It's down to 7%. Daily average for deaths is 18. Uh, new hospital admissions is at 277. And we can actually zoom in California a little more. Let's take a look at LA County where you can see here, LA County, the uh, positivity rate. It's been dropping a little tiny increase on the most recent update. But overall, here's hospitalizations as well in L.A. They are dropping at this time. Finally, let's do a little bit look at uh, influenza here. And you can see influenza across the United States is not doing that bad. We do suddenly note that there are moderate influenza levels up in Alaska. And we still do have that low category in uh, several places which would be down in the southeast and also here in New Mexico, uh, New York City, and District of Columbia. And you're, when you're thinking low, you're thinking, oh, that's not bad. Well, no, it's not. But actually, the lowest level on this chart is minimal, which there are still quite a few states that are in the minimal range, which is a good thing to see. And to be honest with you, I think it's safe to say influenza, as of right now, is having a slightly slower start than it did last year at this time. I seem to recall us being further ahead than this last year at this time, meaning that the levels were higher. So this is some good news. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. We'll have another pandemic update again, possibly tomorrow. And then on Sunday, look for a wastewater update video. I think we need to do a dedicated wastewater video. And I know there's some good news now, but there's also some places, I'm sure we'll find a few sites that aren't dropping and still are rising so we have to be mindful of that it's the weekend that means there's more risky behavior going to potentially happen maybe you're going to be doing things maybe you have to go out and about whatever do so with your n95 or better high quality mask it is super important i will see you all again next time but first off hit that thumbs up button if you like this video if you want to see more content like this Subscribe to my channel down below if you know anyone that needs to see this content. By all means, share this with them. And that's it. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic weekend. Thanks for watching.